Hey everyone, welcome back to Mom Minute. On today's show, I have a wonderful elementary school teacher named Tracy here with me. She's gonna help me answer today's question. Thank you for being here today, Tracy. Thanks for having me, Mindy. Yeah. <laughs> so when I saw this question, I thought it would be particularly helpful to have both a parent's perspective and a teacher's perspective to answer this question from Susan. She asks, how do you approach a child's teacher when you disagree about a grade or think they're being unfair? How involved should you be? For my kids, I like to be really involved as a parent and really stay on top of what they're doing in school and also how they're interacting with their teachers, mm -hmm. which I hope is a good thing. But I know from my perspective, sometimes it's really hard as a parent when your kid comes home and they have a bad grade and you're not sure why and you are trying to understand what's happening in the classroom. And of course, you're getting like your child's perspective, which is sometimes totally way <laughs> off base. But I know one thing you don't do is go in and attack the teacher, right? Yeah, I would say that definitely schedule you know, a conference yeah. or a meeting by maybe emailing or, pho or phone calling the teacher. And I know most teachers really value that parent-teacher right. um, partnership, so I think together uh, you can talk about what the child said at home to the parent, and then the teacher can give the classroom perspective. And for older children, I would say you could even invite the child to the discussion and get their perspective, because how do they feel about the grade? You know, that's an important part as well. Um, it also makes the kid accountable for what's happening, too, because sometimes they leave things out, right? Like they leave like out some of the information where they're maybe a little bit guilty in this situation, and if they're there, it forces them to be accountable for that as well. And the teacher can bring up specific conversations that she mm -hmm. had with the child in the right. classroom and say, remember when we talked about this that the parent might not be aware of? I think that the process is important. Uh, as a teacher, we want to focus on the process of learning. So the grade isn't what's most important. It's how the student got to that grade. Okay. And so, by focusing on um, the strategy that the child is trying to master and different ways to, to help that child, that is the important aspect, not necessarily the grade that they get at the end. So is it possible in your opinion then for a child to receive like a bad grade or a grade they're unhappy with, but to actually have successfully mastered the skill or learned something they didn't learn to begin with? Definitely. I've seen children do so well understanding like a difficult math concept, for example. And then the day of the assessment, it, you know, they get right. nervous, so that can have something to do with it. The assessment might be slightly different than the way that they practiced and they learned. Um, and, and so sometimes like mm -hmm. assessments have tricky questions right? And, and it's very different from the sorts of questions they might have been answering in their workbooks. And I feel like that stuff as a parent you wouldn't necessarily know was happening at school. And so you would just see the bad grade and be frustrated over like, oh, they're failing in math and not realize all of the stuff that went on behind that grade. And also learning is changing so much. We have all these new strategies for teaching math, all these new you know, workshops for reading and writing and parents learn differently right. when 20, 30 years ago when they were in school. And so talking with the teacher helps the parent to learn about those strategies so then they can better support their child's right. learning at home. Right. So I feel like communicating with the teacher and being really involved is important in this, don't you think? Because if a parent is not involved, they're going to miss all of it. Definitely. I think that as long as there's like a mutual respect mm -hmm. and that there's some reflection on the parent's behalf before right. um, inter in interacting with the teacher, it will build this more of a collaborative, communicative right. relationship as opposed to fighting each other. I always think it's sometimes it's hard because you, you want as a parent, your like, instinct is to protect your child, right? My child's right and everyone else is wrong. But I always have to try to like take a step back and think, no, there's always two sides to this. You know, there's probably something I'm missing as a parent here that I need more explanation, you know, about before I start just jumping to the conclusion that the teacher's all wrong. And sometimes, you know, we all do this. We take an experience we had and we project it. Mm -hmm. So a negative experience we had as a, as a student mm -hmm. might not necessarily be what our child is feeling or experiencing. Right. So I think the important takeaways are to not assume that your child is perfect, <laughs> to make sure that you schedule an appointment with the teacher, like face to face, mm -hmm. and also to just try to build that mutual respect for each other Definitely. and to really work together as a partnership for the benefit of the child. Yes. Don't you think? I, I agree. Those are great points. Okay. So have you guys ever been in this situation and how did you handle your disagreement with the teacher? Leave me a comment below and let me know. Thank you so much again for being here today. My pleasure. And thank you guys for watching. We will see you next week. Bye-bye.